Well, it is October 12th, 2024, <clears throat> and I'm on a property where I shot a doe about a week before. Uh, that doe was in a different stand, about 150, 200 yards from here. So uh, I have sat this spot once since then, and I did see a young forkhorn. Uh, but there's been a decent 10 pointer that I got on camera that's borderline daylight hours um, and we got some rain today and it's finally cooled off so you know we've been going without rain for quite a while here so uh, you know I do like hunting after a rain I just wish the rain would have just ended and it's ended a few hours back but uh, we're gonna give it a sit and we've got some brassica and winter rye in this little staging plot and then, you know, just a little bit farther, there's a big standing cornfield. So maybe they'll stage up here and get a little of this before they move on. Uh, the winter rise a little taller than I would like. Um, you know, and, and that's the challenge sometimes with how big a plot and when to plant, you know, when you're near agricultural areas. Because, you know, if I had planted this same plant, Plot in a non-agricultural area, it would be gone. But in this case, you know, there's a lot of egg in the area, so I should have planted it a little later when it came to the winter rye, and I just put the winter rye in after the brassicas had come up. So uh, it's filled in nicely, but I wish the winter rye was a little younger. But it is what it is, and we'll see what we see. Hopefully we get a look at that 10-pointer tonight. Shot a buck, and there's about eight minutes left this season. I'm just gonna wait it out here, and then I'll go back to the truck. But I'm not gonna push it here. You know, it's a nice cool evening, so I'll give it some time. So here we have some decent blood, and I'd like to mark the blood with toilet paper uh, makes it easier to follow the trail and it doesn't have to be on every spot but often enough that you can uh, you know keep your bearings and you know a lot depends on how much blood we're finding so decent amount of blood in here oh i see a white belly nice buck. Well I got the buck hung up and we'll get him skinned and butchered here but uh, it's a nice cool evening so um, I, I got a little time to work with it but we can see the entrance hole here and I got double lung uh, you know there was some blood coming out of its mouth uh, when I uh, recovered it and then if I can get it turned you can see the exit hole is here. So it was slightly quartering uh, towards me and that's why it's a little farther forward on this end than the other end but I got double lung. It went maybe 40 yards. Uh, not an amazing blood trail but you know what I've learned is when you're hunting from a ground line you know even when you do hit them well now all three deer I've shot this year, 
similar situation. Fit them well, they've all expired within 40, 50 yards, but not a lot of blood because when you have these holes that are a little higher up, you don't have the blood necessarily uh, a nice low exit hole that you might have if you were in a tree stand or an elevated platform type of situation for hunting. But um, you just have to go a little slower. Again, I, I had enough blood to find him. And, uh, you know, he actually has 12 points. Nice solid deer. So I'm happy to have him and we will uh, put him to good use.